Okay, so we have at this point talked about, we've done PVT relationships in, the, in chapter 10. Um, we've looked at molar gas volumes as long as you're at STP. Hey, this is really easy. Um, the problem comes up in that, well, we said, you know, if we have some little balloon full of gas and nothing changes but the volume, the pressure and temperature remain constant, we must have changed the number of moles of gas that we have. Well, that's great. So now we have this other factor to consider, and it doesn't fit into the PVT relationship that we've been working with. But we, we have a law for that. <laughs> There's a law for that. So what we're going to start to work with now is the ideal gas law. So this is a new, this is a totally new thing, and this gives you a mathematical relationship with pressure, volume, temperature, and we've added now number of moles. So we can have um, changing amounts of molecules and still work with this. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole derivation with you if you're all okay with that. This is one that I, I think most students find easy enough to just memorize. And also I am told repeatedly that you do this in math. You've done ideal gas law problems in math. Um, you know, simple five-part algebra. <coughs> so... V equals nRT over P, or the way that I always remember it, PV equals nRT. Um, Peaceful Valley equals NERT. There are lots of mnemonics. Wait till we get to puddles and mud and dirt. Um, v, P, and T are, are obvious. Um, N we have used occasionally for number of moles, and you'll get used to seeing that as number of moles. R is the new thing. R is what's called the ideal gas constant. And this is something you haven't seen before. So it is a constant, it is a number that goes into every ideal gas calculation. Now, there, there are some cautions with the ideal gas constant. Okay, so R has a value. Well, it depends on what units the pressure is in. So um, ATMs are one that we commonly see. And R has a value of 0.02057843 liters times ATMs over moles Kelvin. Eh. Um, we typically round it to 0 .0821. You, there are different ideal gas constants for every unit of pressure. If the ideal gas constant you're using does not match the units of pressure in the problem, you will get a completely screwball, way out left field kind of answer. Now, the easy thing, and the thing that I love is that the ideal gas constant is actually just a statement of physical chemical truth, okay? This is mathematical physical chemical truth. The ideal gas constant, R, is equal to 1 atm times 22.4 liters over 1 mole times 273, now to get the right number you actually have to put in the 1.5, 273.15 Kelvin. Well is it true that at 1 atm and 273 degrees Kelvin one mole of gas occupies 22.4 liters of space? Why yes it is, which means you don't actually have to memorize the ideal gas constant, though you will by using it. You can compute it every time. Go ahead and punch those numbers into your handy dandy little calculator. Maybe you don't have to use the 0.15. Yeah, I think you have to not use the 0.15. Yeah, there we go. Scratch the point one five point zero eight two zero five one two eight two ATM liters over mole kelvins, and we round it to point zero eight two one. So you don't actually have to memorize it, though. Like I said, you will. Now, why is the ideal gas constant different based on the units of pressure you're using? Well, let's try something here. What is standard pressure in TOR, or millimeters of mercury? 760 
torr times 22.4 liters over 1 mole times 273 degrees Kelvin. What do you get? If you would be so kind as to turn to page 342 in your chem book, look up the value for R in Tor. Looky there. 62.4. There are other values for pascals and kilopascals, obviously. Millimeters of mercury is the same. Um, if you write out the units for the ideal gas constant every single time, there are two advantages to that. Um, one is it allows you to do dimensional analysis and cancel your units and make sure you've rearranged everything correctly. The other is it forces you to write the units for pressure and then when you go to write your pressure and you put in units, you immediately get a little ding visually if it doesn't match. Because um, like I said, if your units don't match for the ideal gas constant and your pressure value, you're doomed. Doomed from the outset. So, okay. That's the ideal gas constant. Now let's do a couple. We are going to do practice problem number one on 343. Um, what pressure in atmospheres is exerted by 3.25 moles of hydrogen gas in a 4.08 liter container at 35 degrees Celsius? So, two things we're going to do first. Always, always write your ideal gas law. So just start off with that every time. And then list your variables. So we've got pressure, volume, number of moles, what value of R we're using. Yeah, and normally um, I would not list a constant along with my variables, but because there are four possible options for the ideal gas constant, I tend to list it with my variables so that I don't screw it up because Really, I'm trying to share with you ways to overcome your pea brain because these are the dumb mistakes you can make. Don't make them. So the pressure is what we're looking for. That's what we'd like to know. And the volume, we're told, is 4.08 liters. <clears throat> Number of moles is 0.325 moles. Um, and we're asked for pressure in atmospheres. So we're going to use the ideal gas constant of 0 0.0821 atmosphere liters over mole kelvins. And we are told that the temperature is 35 Celsius. So what is that in Kelvin? 35 plus 273? 308. 308 Kelvin. Okay, so first of all we need to rearrange to solve for P. P equals NRT over V. And now we'll plug everything in and we'll do a little dimensional analysis check. So 0.325 moles, we're going to run out of space here, times 0 0.0821. Okay, are you ready? ATM liters over mole kelvins times 308 Kelvin. And that is all divided by 4.08 liters. So let's do some dimensional analysis checking here. We have moles times ATM liters over mole Kelvins. Moles cancel. We have kelvins times ATM liters over moles kelvin. Kelvins cancel. We have liters divided by liters. Liters cancel. What units are we left with? ATMs, which is what we wanted to be in for pressure. So it's, it's nice to have all those units written down because it allows you to do that dimensional analysis check. What do you get for a raw answer? All right, so that's our raw answer, and we have... The book says we have three sig figs, but we know better than that. We know that we actually have two sig figs because of that temperature 
number. So the pressure that we get is 2.0 atm. This is going to be the pressure on the inside of the container. Okay. These are these are pretty straightforward. Um, and of course, you realize we can do something like give you a mass of a known gas, and then what do you have to do before you can do ideal gas law? Convert to moles. So do we want to practice one like that? Okay. Okay, so this is on page 345, number one. How many grams of CO2 are there in a 45.1 liter container at 34 Celsius and 1.04 atms? So here, we're actually going to do our factor label on the back end, because we want an answer in grams, but there's nothing in the ideal gas law that will get us to grams, but we can get a number of moles. So if we, again, do, you know, list PV equals NRT, and in this case, let's, so let's list our variables, PV and RT, and we're at, what, 34 Celsius, so that's 307 Kelvin. We are working in ATMs, so we're going to use 0 0.0821 ATM liters over mole Kelvins. Um, our pressure is 1.04 ATMs, and the volume of our container is 45.1 liters. We don't have moles, and we're not being asked for moles. But we have to solve for moles because what are we actually being asked for? Mass in grams. And the only way to get to mass in grams is to go through moles. So we're going to solve this for moles. So PV divided by RT equals N. And we will plug everything in. And we'll do a little bit of dimensional analysis. So we have ATMs divided by ATMs, those cancel. Liters divided by liter, those cancel. Kelvins um, divided by Kelvins cancel. We're left with moles. Um, and it's the denominator of a denominator, hoy, which makes it the numerator. I hate those things. Double, double denominators just stink. But that's going to end up on top, because remember, we invert and multiply. Okay, so give me a raw answer when you get Okay, so we have a raw answer. Are we done? No. So now we're going to have to do a factor label on top of this. So we're going to start off, and we're going to use this entire number. We don't take any rounding until the very end. I'm not going to write the whole thing there, but I'm going to pull it down on my calculator. Um, if you're using the multi-views, this is easy to do. And we are talking about CO2. So one mole of CO2 has what as a mass? And it just so happens we just did this on the quiz. So 12.01 um, and 0, 016 times 2, we get 44.01. So 44.01 grams of CO2 is one mole of CO2. Okay, so what do we get for a raw answer? Somebody got a number for me? Okay, so we've got our raw answer of 81.899, etc., grams of CO2. How many sig figs do we have? We have to go all the way back to our original numbers, and that gives us two sig figs because that 34 limits us. So that's going to be a final answer of 82 grams of CO2. Okay, 82 grams of CO2. So you can see all the potential for fun with these. Um, I will assign some practice problems out of the chapter review. You can work on those. So let's see, 16, 16 through 20 parts A and C only for practice, and we'll have a FIP quiz on Wednesday when I see you again.